Hello, you got the Iceman. Interviews with the Iceman. Today, I'm real excited to be speaking to my man, Brody Stewart, of the Brody Stewart Band. How are you, brother? How are things going? Hey, man. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing great. How, how are things on your end? You know, cr- crazy, crazy, crazy as usual, but it's good. It's yeah. a good crazy. <laughs> yeah, you never complain about a good crazy. Um, I, I'll yeah. tell you that. And, um, you know, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to speak to us and the fans. And, uh, you know, just uh, I know there's a lot of big things happening we'll get into. But tell us a little, Brody, about where you're from, you know, where, where you're living now and, and kind of what you have going on uh, musically at, at the present time. You know, I, I live in Northern California in a little town called Walnut Creek, which is uh, a little um, – close to maybe a half hour to 45 minutes outside of San Francisco and the same about an hour away from Sacramento. So I've been kind of based in the, in the Bay area and also Sacramento area. But, you know, most of my, uh, my country roots are from the Red Bluff area, which is way up, way up, uh, North. And, uh, people would say Red Bluff, you know, where's the country out in California? It's, it's quite country, believe it right. or not. Right. And, uh, so that's kind of where it all started for me, and uh, you know now I'm I'm just literally just finished up my debut album. It's called Born American, and I uh, I started uh, this album um, started writing the writing process a few years back, and it's finally getting finished. And most recent, we're just playing a ton of shows and uh, and continuing forward and trying to trying to break it in this, like we say, crazy business that we're in. But, you know, we're having a good time, and and some things are starting to happen for us, so we're super excited. Right, right. And, and it's funny, you know, be, you being in Northern California, so wait a minute now, because, you know, we, we're out of Nashville and New England, so I, I have the one-up on you in football, but I guess in baseball, you guys in Frisco kind of have a one-up on us here in New England, right? <laughs> yeah, but we still have five, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I knew that was coming. Oh my god! Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me that low blow. I'm gonna recuperate from that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, about the new uh, the the new CD, the new album that's coming out, uh, Born American. Why don't you tell us a little about um, you know, some of the people that were part of that, who you teamed up with? I know there were some pretty impressive names you have. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was such a great story. A friend of mine owns a a guitar shop down, down in Nashville called Rock Block Guitars. And, and, uh, I've known him for some time and his name's Drexel Sloan. And he kept telling me, Hey, you gotta meet my buddy, Adam. And, uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's talk for sure. And, Lo and behold, Adam Schoenfeld is his name, and we ended up getting on the phone finally after a long time, and we, we just hit it off immediately on on the phone, and Adam eventually, or excuse me, he started in, in a band called Big and Rich, which I'm sure everybody's heard of before, <laughs> and yeah. uh, he was playing guitar with them, and then most recent, he's playing lead guitar for Tim McGraw, and... You know, he's been a guitar player that's playing, been playing in Nashville for years, and he's just an amazing player and and producer. And so we just teamed up and decided we hit it off and um, decided to make this album together. And he brought in an all-star, you know, cast of players to do this album with us. And and it was just an amazing experience, man. I mean, if you've if you've ever had a chance to sit in a studio and work with some of the best musicians in the world, it's 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 something you'll never forget. I mean, just how well they play, how quick they are, and um, just how how nice everybody is as well. I mean, it's just an awesome experience, and that's how it all started. And then he's been playing on every, you know, Jason Aldean number one to Luke Bryan to uh, Florida Georgia Line, you name it. It was he's just one of those guys, and I was fortunate enough and. And lucky enough to work with him, and and here it is. So we're just kind of starting starting to get this music out to the people. Wow, that, that now. you know that that's amazing. Just to to be involved with people like that, have them involved in your album, and you know I I can't wait. 
you know, we got a couple of songs from it today. Actually, at the end of the interview, we're going to world premiere one of your songs. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing the music on the whole CD. And I know the fans are. I, I'll tell you what, let's go into one of the songs. And, and before I play, you can maybe tell us a little about it. The first song I'm going to play is Fine Looking Country Girl. Now, I'm always in for one of those. But uh, why don't you tell us a little about the song and, uh, you know, if you wrote it and, and just a little about it. You know, it was almost one of those things where I wanted a, a country version of a, a pour, pour Some Sugar on Me by, by a band called Def Leppard that I've heard and we've all probably heard many times. And right. It was kind of an influence, I guess, when I'd hear a song like that. And I'd go, you know what? I just want a good feeling, mid-tempo, you know, song that just hits home that's kind of an anthem. And I think, uh, you know, that's where it started. And the song is about... It's about any girl, woman that listens to country music. You're a fine looking country girl to me, and that's kind of where the where the song started. And uh, I'm super excited about this song. I always have been, um, and it's been out a little while. That's the only song that I, that's the very first song I wrote, honestly, for this album. So right, right here it is, man. Well, yeah, enjoy and it. it. Hey, and it, it's. It. It's been in the rotation for a while with us, so here it is, man. That's that anthem song. This is Brody Stewart, fine looking country girl. You got interviews with the Iceman. Yeah, that's right. There ain't nothing sweeter than a fine looking country girl. Out of a dollar. Lining up saying no, oh, yeah From her boots to her collar Legs are getting taller Dancing on the bar saying oh, no, yeah Oh, the way she move Makes it smooth when it's going down So pull me one now oh, Get your hands up We gotta shout it out Raise your glass up We gotta make it loud Now bottoms up Let the cowboys scream There's nothing sweeter than a fine looking country girl Sweeter than a fine looking country girl. She's a hot looking lady, making us crazy. The club's kicking hard, oh yeah. Her body's moving busy, making us dizzy. So do another round for us, oh yeah. No, the way she moves makes it smooth when it's going down. So call me one now. Country girl, hey. but get your hands up, all the fine looking country girls. Hey. Oh, raise your glass up, all the fine looking country girls. Hey. Now bottoms up to the fine looking country girls. Ain't nothing sweeter than a fine looking country girl. Fine looking country girl. I'm talking today to my man Brody Stewart. Hey Brody, ask tell me tell the Iceman this. Who are your musical influences? You know, you told us a lot about who you're playing with and a little about the inspiration for the song we just played, but who who do you look up to not only now, but when you started out in music? You know, um 
there's so many um, from so many different genres of music because I, you know, just young growing up and having my mom play me so much music as a, as a kid and, and growing up and listening and being influenced by different things. I mean, I got to say from a, it goes all the way from a, from Leonard Skinner, of course, one of my favorite bands growing up. And then, um, of course, all the way to the left of a guy like Lionel Richie, um, right. huge influence because of him as, as a songwriter. And then, you know, I, I, there was a lot of Al Dean and, and influence, but not trying to be Al Dean. Um, mm-hmm. your Brantley Gilberts, your, your Keith Urban's, um, but believe it or not, I love a guy like Paul Rogers and bad company. So there's, there's been so many, um, producers and, and writers and, um, cause I'm a writer as well. I've written pretty much on every song on the entire album and co-written and written them. So, um, that would be it. It's really hard to put it in a nutshell, but I mean, influential, I mean, my influences have been wide, very wide. I, I hope I, I, you know, put enough names in there, but I, I could probably keep going till tomorrow right. on the names. Right. But, uh, and a lot of gospel influence from being in church and stuff. Um, absolutely that too. Right. Um, and, but most recent, I'd, I'd say, um, those three for the most part, you know, there's so, there's just so many to be honest, man. Right. And you, and you said you, you'd written, you wrote most of the, um, songs on your current, um, album. Who, who else has, have you, have you written for anybody else, not only in country, but in any other genres? Have you done music for, for them? Yeah. You know, I, I was, that's crazy story. My, my manager at some point was just sending some songs around and I wrote this song um, years back and it was a song called Sweet Isabel and if I ever had a daughter one day I wanted to, it, it was kind of my song to her. Um, it was a song about life and lo and behold he was he was kind of playing it for some folks and it perked some ears up and um, it ended up being cut by all people by a guy by the name of Enrique Iglesias. Wow. Um and it was a, it was an awesome situation for me as a songwriter. But it was odd because it was a song that I loved so much, and I wanted to be able to sing and perform it myself. And um, it was it was slated to be the first single off his his last album at the time, and um, it, it ended up being on his Insomniac album. And you know the experience alone, it, it, it gave me a gave me a publishing deal that I signed with with Warner Music and Warner Chapel and. It was a great experience for me because I got to write with a ton of writers and I had cuts on different albums getting ready to come out. And, you know, really, it really made me chomp on the music business, though, to realize how much you can love it and how much it can be. It can be real painful, you know, and I think that that's what I want to. I'm glad that I can have these interviews sometimes because you got to really love this if this is what you want to do, because it's a tough, tough, tough business. Right. And. Um, it's cutthroat, it's brutal, and but the love of it is what keeps me going. And, and you know, that experience alone was, was a great one for me and being able to write with so many cats. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm I just, but I love performing so much. I, I had to get away from that for a minute and then come back. And that's when I started writing this album. Right. So it, it, it was, it's, you're it absolutely right about, about the whole toughness of the business i mean people see a performer even even radio what i got going on in it and we have a lot of fun and it's a passion and we love to do it but you pay a price i mean it's not easy you know and no and, it's it's not easy at all i mean right. you know if i can <sighs> yeah you hear it so many times and how cliche it is but if this is truly what you want to do you have to live and breathe it every right. moment of every day i mean right. it's really truly what it is it's not just writing it's not just playing shows it's it's everything and the way the music business has changed so much to you know to your your social medias and everything mm-hmm. i mean everything is important and it's not just about you know necessarily chasing the record deal there's so many avenues that you can do but you have to be passionate and work your tail off at every situation every time and and you know if you love it that much just never give up just keep going and keep striding that's all i can really you know, put it, and I got to tell myself that looking in the mirror every day sometimes, right. to right. be honest. It's hard. E- exactly. It's 
it's funny because I normally ask, and you answered it, I normally ask the artists that come on um, because I have so many new artists listen in, listening in because that's what we do, about advice for peers and, and just, you know, but you, you kind of took that and ran with it and already told the artist, the other artist that might be listening in, what they need to do or kind of what your formula is. I want to talk a right. little about the, you know, the, the writing that you do. Um, tell me, is, is there a mindset that you're in? I know a lot of writers, some writers have to be in a room and just closed in by themselves. Other writers could be driving down the road and all of a sudden they're pulling over because something pops in their head. Is there a style or is, you know, how do you determine a song? Do you close yourself in or it could be anywhere? You know, it can be anywhere for me personally. I think everybody's different. You know, there are, there's people that want to jump in a room with others and I do enjoy co-writing. I typically really try to start a song and then maybe get somebody else and finish the song. Um, you know, there's some that I've obviously written all the way through myself. I mean, it, it's a good perspective, but you know, for example, um, a, a song like, which is one of my favorite songs called Gotta Be a Country Song. I was literally in Lake Tahoe having, if not the greatest, one of the greatest days of my life. And when I was watching the sun go down on the lake and my buddy was sitting up on top of, we were standing on top of a, um, a balcony outside just watching the ravine of the lake. And he looks over at me, man, we're drinking a cup. This is a true story. Drink a couple beers in hand, looks over at me, man. He's all, you know what, bro? There's got to be a there's got to be a country song in a sunset like this. And I just went, oh. <laughs> and I looked down and I said, "Hey, man, you just gave me another song." And truly, I started writing the chorus right there, just kind of joking around, singing the chorus, and uh, from there, wrote that entire song about that day and and what it meant to me and described the whole day. So. It's all different. You're absolutely right. You could be driving down the road. You could literally be sitting at, whether it's a coffee shop or whatever, or just, you know, your mindset being somewhere. And then, yes, it's focused. It's pretty much, okay, let me sit down and grind this out and, and, and go from there. So that, that's how it is for me and has been for me. Right, right. Well, why, why don't we play that right now? This is got to be a country song. Brody Stewart, Interviews with the Iceman. Yeah, the party's going on I live so burning From kissing all day long And man, what a good day When we all get along When we make sounds flashing Everybody's laughing Washing any worry away and all the kids kicking sand up on ladies getting tanned up The fellas pray that we don't change And it's days like this we never want to end yeah. There's gotta be a country song There's gotta be a country song Yeah, there's gotta be a country song Go no, for sunset Said that days. Oh yeah, for the sunset like this. Oh yeah, yeah. Stop time from ticking. I don't wanna go back to everyday living. No, I don't want. Sleeping into these chairs, kicking back until the band keep playing. This is where we're staying, and we'll sing it till the night is day. That stays like this, we never want to end. Yeah. No, there's gotta be a country song. There's gotta be a country song.
There's gotta be a country song. Yeah, there's gotta be a country song. No, for a sunset. A sunset. was gonna be a country song interviews with the ice man real special to hear that song after hearing how it was written in the moment and uh you know that's a great song brother I, I once again i appreciate you spending some time with us today to just talk a little about what you have going on um i want to ask you some of the acts that you might have opened up for i know that was several impressive ones who have you opened up for recently oh man it's it's been crazy i mean you know i've been really got really got lucky i've had uh, wma wme has been booking a lot of shows for me and um been on board and helping me out and it's been a i've just been really lucky man but we've been on i've been on stage gosh the last few years with anywhere from lee bryce to thompson square Easton corvin joe nichols um chris cagle uh gosh i'm trying to think so many uh, the farm, Leonard wow. Skinner, um, Lady Antebellum, Dustin Lynch. I mean, it, it goes on and on. I'm trying to think of all on the top of my head. So many shows we've been playing. Uh, Brett Eldridge, you know, it's it's and, and open up for Big and Rich as well. Right. It's it's amazing. I mean, you know, we've been really lucky um, and fortunate, and and I'm super just, you know, and been blessed, and I just feel like. I'm hoping this is it, you know. I mean, it's I've I've put my heart and soul into this album, and and hopefully it it the public decides or gets a chance to decide at some point whether it's good or not. And that's all I'm that's all I'm looking at, you know. For me, I made the record that I loved, and that's what it's all about. Right, is, is making something you love, and hopefully people can connect to it, man. So that's I, that's been that. Right. I sure. I think when you do that, when you when you make something that you believe in and you love that automatically, you know, the, the audience and the listeners actually can feel that. And I think that like, you're right. That's what makes a great album or great CD. When you're doing something you love that you wrote yourself, that you got these amazing artists in, 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 in the studio with you. And when that comes off and, and you do that, I mean, the listeners can feel that. So like I said, I've heard, I've had the, the pleasure thanks to you and management to hear what you have coming out, man. And I'm a big believer and I, and I like it. I like it a lot. Hey, and, thank you very much. And I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I just wanted to share that with you and thank you and what you're doing for, for so many up and coming artists. I mean, it's, it's, going back to you and not beating a dead horse as tough as it is in this business to give people an opportunity um to be heard and do do what they do it's, we can't thank you guy like you enough man and it's it's very much appreciated and more than you know and man i bet it uh it fills your heart up too man you know, that's what it's all about. At least I, I, at least I feel like it does. You know, no, what I mean? it, it, it makes you happy. Yeah, it that's does, what, man. What it's all about, man. It, so like I just want to say thank you so much for doing that for a guy that's like us. Th- thank you. I mean, it really does because it takes something I wanted to do my whole life and make it become a dream. But the important thing is I'm able to do what I do to help people like yourself get to where you want to go and, and that's a good feeling and i always tell artists i do what i do because you do what you do you know maybe right. i can patent that saying sometime who knows but let me ask you just a little back about when you first started this a little about the path of the road i mean you you know have you played shows in the, only on the west coast i mean when you were starting out um, in in this industry and in country, I mean, what was some of the, what was some of the paths that you've taken to get where you are today and to get where you want to be tomorrow? Um, you know, the path started mainly with the writing, getting this, 
getting this writing done for this album and then um, started to book local shows. You know, that's what we did. We found a, a lane to be able to, to book some local shows and then it just started to grow. We got a couple of good plays and opened it up for some, some bigger artists and then we, but we pounded it. I mean, we've been, we've been playing out for, you know, gosh, I've been, I've been out for the last four, you know, good four years solid, just, just busting it. And, uh, that, that's a huge, um, part of it is getting out and playing as many, as many live shows as you can and getting your music out. You know, we've had to do a lot of, a lot of the covers mixed in, but luckily we get to mix in our originals and, and there so we can get people, you know, not only to make them happy because they hear music they're familiar with and then, you know, slide some of our songs into the sets. And that's kind of what's helped us get a lot of shows as well. Right. And yeah. It's mainly been on the West coast, um, up and down from up in Oregon, down, down there, you know, down to Arizona. And we're, we're really trying to spread our wings a little bit more to some other places this year. And, you know, as far as getting that path was also just hooking up with some, some, some good people in the business and, and, and taking some meetings and, and doing that kind of thing. And, and right. that's what we're still doing. I mean, it's, it's still a process. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It never stops. I mean, we're not necessarily chasing the record deal, which I call it, you know, it's like, if, if that's meant to come, that's, that's what's meant to be. And, and uh, cause it's really hard to get a record deal these days. It's right. very, very difficult. I mean, you've got to build it and build it for them to kind of almost start seeing you and they'll come around. And, you know, you, you've noticed all these artists out of nowhere, boom, you know, right. you think, Hey, Oh my gosh, they just broke. No. Did you realize we've been humping it for 10 years? Right. Um, right. So you hear those stories all the time. It's, you know, it, it's one of those things. So that, that's really where that started. And now that's, that's where we're we're continuing to do grow is and wanting to grow is not only um, playing the shows and spreading our wings out that way and also just really getting our our songs and videos and and stuff out uh, out on the internet and really really pushing our social media stuff and that's another that's a whole nother beast <laughs> right so, now now we're, we're working that hard as well so okay that's kind of where it is now. Good. Now, where can your fans find you, social media, and and find your um, music? We, let them know where they can find you so they can uh, look yep, you, you up. You can you can find you can find my music at brodystewartband dot com. That's b r o d i e s t e w a r t band dot com. That's my website. Um, the CD is not for sale yet. Um, it will be very soon. You can grab "Fine Looking Country Girl" on iTunes and. And my uh, my next single is going to be a song called Mississippi Mud, which you'll be able to find on iTunes very very soon. Um, we'll have the lyric video coming up. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be there and ready for you to listen to on YouTube and check out um, on Monday. And uh, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll have some more announcements as well. Some really good shows coming up for us. Uh, this uh this year i'm super excited man and um that's it good well i'll tell you speaking of mississippi mud let's uh let let's do something special we're gonna world premiere it right in this interview um i know we we spoke briefly in the past uh, over the past month or so and we've been wanting to make this happen and now it is time so you know what why, why don't we do that and, and tell us a little about the song itself. Then we're going to go right in and world premiere it for everybody. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I, uh, man, this song was written about a girl that literally loves to go country dancing. She does a little party now and then, but she's a good girl. And uh, she just has a passion and, and her blood pumps for country music. And that's really what it was for me um, when I wrote it. Just the whole, that concept, it, came into my head like watching so many people go to these clubs and and love dancing and and uh and listening to country music and partying and holding their you know yeah holding their glasses high man that's that's what this song was about and yeah. that, that that's what drove me to write it well yeah. I, I gotta tell you something as you know we're in the studio and as it's happening you my my cleaning guy fazo if you're familiar with him he's, he's yeah. on the other side listening <laughs> and and he just holds up a piece of paper and he goes ice man can you tell can you tell Brody to give me that girl's phone number? I don't even know. Come on, guy, yo. 
<laughs> yeah, listen, if there's that's a girl that's awesome, out there man. like that, I'm going to oh. want her phone number, Fonzo. <laughs> oh, that's so that's so good. Uh, you know you know what her number is? Go ahead. 8675309. 9. And he's writing it down. He's writing it down. What? What do you mean you need the area code? <laughs> uh, Brody, man, I, I tell you, I want to I thank you. We're going to world premiere this in a second. I want to thank you for taking the time and uh, talking to us, man. And I look forward to playing your music. And, you know, I look forward and I know you got a big, big future ahead of you, buddy. And, uh, you know, once again, thank you for your time. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it and everything you're doing once again. And uh, if I can say anything one more time, man, live your dream. That's, That's it. it. Live your dream. Th- thank you. Well, here it is, the world premiere of Brody Stewart, Brody Stewart Band. This is Mississippi Mud. You're hearing it here first with the Iceman. Be sure to watch this song coming out in the future. You'll be able to pick it up on the new CD. The video's coming out. But it's Mississippi Mud, Brody Stewart. Thanks, brother. You have a great day. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. She's a Mississippi queen, a skin tight jeans. Ain't afraid of shooting biscuit made in Tennessee. Loves her Hank Jr. and her J.L. Dean. She's a hick town, hot of country music fan. She's a party every Thursday through Saturday night. And throwing them back like a dude sometimes. It's crazy to see from a girl that fell, but it's looking all right to me. So throw your hands up and wave them side to side. Come on. Shake across the floor Come on, mama, gonna give me some more Gonna stick on you like a Mississippi mud Well, she was born and raised with music as her look Our country music pumping through her blood She took it to the floor across the county lines Boots stopping gypsy woman See you dance some more Do the two-step booty shake across the floor Let's go Let me see you dance some more Do the two-step 